I am an Indian, an optimist, however, a critically thinking one. In my short-lived experience in India, I have stories to tell you. I come from a small town called Kimin in Arunachal Pradesh. Arunachal is one of the 29 states of India in the northeastern part, where more than 200 tribes reside. And I come from a tribe called Nishi. Now, where I grew up, the idea and lessons of activism, Indian polity, governance and administration is something that I understood much more than anything else in my life. The reason, my father was a social worker who later took to politics in his life. Now this awareness of political activism is not unique to me because from where I come from, many young men and women take interest in political science and to understand the Indian governance because that is one of the most effective tool of development in our state. Now, my journey from far-flung Arunachal to the capital Delhi was a very challenging one. In 2009, I had arrived and it showed me a different India. But when I got to Delhi, I had made it through one of the prestigious colleges of Delhi University. Now, why am I sharing you this? Because the notion of social justice that the Constitution affords us is something that allowed me and many like me from both marginalized communities to avail higher education in colleges and universities across India, which otherwise would not be possible. So, this is why I'm telling you this story. Now, my parents never had education. They married very early, as early as child marriage, conforming to the tribal traditions. My mother never went to school. But my first experience of racism was in my own country. 2009, location Chandni Chowk, Central Delhi, time 3 p.m. I dwindled trying to count the pair of hands on me. I struggled. Nine, ten, eleven. There were just too many of them. I resisted, but it was more this time. I had made racism first time. On January 29, 2014, a young guy, Nido Tanya from Arunachal, was beaten to death in the Lajpatnagar market of Delhi. The reason? He looked simply different. A couple of years later, two similar but parallel incidents took place. Two young guys from Mizoram were beaten in Bangalore for not speaking Kannad. Two students from Nagaland were brutally tortured for hours by local men in Gurgaon to simply teach them a lesson that you don't belong here. What's terrifying is their intent. They chopped off one of their hair and said, if you tribal people from the Northeast come here, we will kill you. A few years later, my friends and I were denied an entry into a hotel in Jaipur just because we didn't look Indian enough. A, student, a group of students from Assam on their trip to the Taj Mahal were asked to prove their nationality through their passports, and some of them even made to sing national anthem. A girl from Manipur was harassed by an immigration official at Delhi's airport, asking her, Tum Indian to nahi dikti ho. You don't look Indian enough. He also wanted to test her off her Indianness by asking how many states comprised India and what were the neighboring states of Manipur. Now, what is this racism? Racism, we have read and learned, is the idea of belief that one race is superior over the another, which often leads to discrimination and prejudices based on ethnicity and race towards people. But to simply put these under two categories is not enough. It's unfair. Because look at India. India cannot be explained in a simple manner because we have too many variables to look into account. See, the intersectionality of caste, class, gender, religion, and race. Racism sometimes cannot be revealed at all. It has various faces and tenets. 
I have a million stories to share, but one thing in particular that reminds me of now is, in my initial years in Delhi, when I was looking for a rented accommodation, one of the landlord looked at me and said, from the Northeast, how will you pay the rent? I hope you're not that type of girl. And I was trying to understand what he meant. And it's not just this story, there are a million stories. If you are a man from the Northeast, you are often looked at with a lens of characterless, drug addict, drunkard. And a woman, there's sadder stories. But racism is something that we need to understand that it's not left, right, one or two. But any action, any thought, any process that acts as an impediment or a hindrance for a dignified life is racism. Be it a simple racial slur to chinky, Chinese, to not giving a job, not giving a house on the basis of someone's ethnicity or race. Now, when those men at Chandni Chowk assaulted me, I was angry and I retaliated, but you know what they did? One of them grabbed my hand and said, Tum kya kar loge? They knew I was helpless. I was weak. Hum sab itni achhe Hindi bolte hai, aur apne aap ko hamesha ek Indian hi mante aaye hai. Lekin kya ek Hindi bolna hi ek Bharatiya hone ka ek matra pehchan hai? Is Hindi the prerequisite to being an Indian? Kya hum aapke jaise dikte nahi hai, to aap hume maroge, ghar nahi doge. A few years later, there was another story in Bangalore. A very young guy, first-year college student called Higyo Gungte, was forced to lick the boots of his landlord because of excess use of water, a trivial issue. Now, I wonder sometimes, had Nido not looked different, would he be alive today? The Higyo's landlord was a lawyer by profession. Wasn't he educated? I fail to understand. There are so many stories like that. These are only some of them I mention. They only had dreams to come from those villages and have a better life in the cities of India. Now, what can we do? Can we just cry over it and discuss and just let it go? No. First, we must understand that the idea of India is India only because of our diversity. This nation does not preach of one identity, one religion, or one set of values. We celebrate Holy, Eid, Christmas, and so many more. Are we short of holidays ever? No. And let me just put you a few questions to ponder upon. How many states are in India? How many in the northeast of India? Eight. Have you heard of Arvind Kejriwal? Have you heard of Iram Sharmila? Have you heard of Anna Hazare? Have you heard of P.A. Sangma? You would read about Arundhati Roy, but would you read about Mamang Dai? You've heard Amir Khan, but would you read? Who? Tell me. There are so many artists, stories, folk tales, culture. We want to share, but India does not ask. No school curriculum talks about it. I think we have failed somewhere to represent our inclusive India. Now, when we accept this, only we can start a conversation. And I think the government must have the utmost responsibility in teaching the country about the culture, history, and politics of this nation, India's struggle for independence, and the past of Assam, Arunachal, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, Sikkim, and Tripura. And anger is not the solution. I have lived with it all my life, but I have evolved. I think instead we need to teach each other how to love, fight injustice, resist hatred and prejudices. I think that's when we will begin to have a conversation. And also, I think the more important point is we need to take responsibility in ourselves as an individual. Pick up that pen, write stories, and also, very importantly, introspect on your behavior towards your neighbor. Your neighbor might need you more than anything else, but we don't realize that. And 
I think one important uh, discussion that I need to bring forth to you is the cultural diversity that is not represented in the media, internet, especially popular culture like Bollywood. Bollywood also in many ways have done harm by not giving the right information. Just to make your brain uh, work on that, why is that only certain communities of people in Bollywood are represented as chokidar, servants, bahadur? We must think about all that. Now, as I come to a conclusion, I also would like to tell you that there are million stories, but this one in particular again. As a woman, the struggle for liberation is a common cause across the globe. But I, coming from the northeast of India as a tribal woman, I have a very different experience. Women look at me in the streets and ask me my price. I remember going to meet a friend in a hotel. I was asked by two men in an elevator, what's your price? I didn't know how to respond. Even the police that I called later to file a complaint with said, did you have alcohol? Why are you out at this time of the night? We are called prostitutes, sluts, and easy picking by men. Who is responsible for all of this? We need to think about all our actions and thoughts. We need to fight against these prejudices that we have built over the years. Before it's too late, we need to really, really think on that. Here's a short poetry uh, summarizing the theme of Wings of Liberty, Freedom, and my emotions when I talk about racism and the idea of India today. This is the country of many gods. This is the country of many bloods. This is the country of many identities. This is the country of many names. Do not forget this region, India's Northeast. Long history, distorted geography, blood, conflict, and pain. Do not forget our sufferings, our ancestors, the headhunters. Remember our fathers the same way we remember our Indian soldiers. Remember the courage, the legs that carried you to freedom. Remember my father and his friends carried you to victory. The 1962 war. Remember we are here and they are the reason I am here. Memories and houses drowning in rivers. Young flesh and bones trapped in coal mines. Thousands killed, thousands murdered, women raped, waging war against the state. Lawlessness, impunity, states submerged in agony. India's stepsisters, eight beautiful states often forgotten, often at the brink. But what do I tell of this free fort pillar? Where is media? Maybe I am not the only one with a murdered father. Media is a lie. It is a parasite on corporate's money. Blessed by oligarchs, all colors, all same, pick up your swords or leave. Because I'm tired of crying, I'm tired of begging. All I can see are the divided nations, divided emotions. Seeking justice that I come to the wrong place. Seeking justice that our lives matter. Who is an Indian? What is an Indian? Please answer. I would like to end with my father's uh, story. The apathy and the indifference towards my father's struggle for justice is something that I really condemn when I think about India. Because I wrote a hundred emails, it's been a year and a half, I failed to get justice for my father's case. No media attention, nobody helped. Most of them said, where is Arunachal? They said, JNU student, no. I wonder sometimes, where did I go wrong? But I believe this country will rise above all of this. This country will rise above this hatred. As we were struggling, the JNU Student Union elections were around the corner. 
And I took a plunge knowing the meaning and the importance of the student union elections in today's time. And I was correct. You will not believe the same journalist who did not respond to my emails in 2017 now was getting back to me saying, are you the Rina, the same daughter who is fighting for her father? I must tell you, India, sorry, I had a bad experience. Yet again, a student election gets more attention than a murder story in the Northeast. Thank you.